All right, guys, here we go. I want to thank my subscriber for sending this along to me. It is a clip with the uh, head meteorologist out of Raleigh, North Carolina, W-R-A-L. Wow, okay. Uh, life has really become something that is quite um, incomprehensible. Incomprehensible. I don't know if I can get through playing this video for you because it's not on YouTube, so I don't know how to download it. So I have to do it manually. Unbelievable what this guy is saying. Unbelievable what this guy is saying. But what he has said in this 11 minutes and 30 seconds, his job is meaningless. That's what he is saying. That they, they want you to take a look, or he wants you to take a look at weather forecasting in a new way. In a new way. Yeah. You want to listen to his way? His way? We don't know what the hell we're doing. That's his way. Listen to this. I, I, I don't know what to say about this. Uh, how can people listen to this guy and actually know what he's saying, comprehend what he is saying, but listen to him? And they're not questioning him and what he's saying. Un unbelievable. Hi, everybody. I'm Greg Fishel, and I wanted to spend a few minutes talking to you today about something that I'm very passionate about. Uh, unfortunately, the broadcast industry as a whole uh, doesn't share that passion. Uh, we're trying to do everything we can here at WRAL, but... Uh, there's a lot of folks in television and on the web and various other places that uh, just haven't bought into this idea. And I think it's consistent uh, with uh, where the science is. The science is advanced, and we need to advance with it. And so I want to share with you some of those thoughts today. Uh, first of all, I want to start off with the idea of probability. And when we talk about the probability of rain, and maybe you take a look at a, at a forecast uh, that you see on your phone or on the web or whatever, and it has an 80% chance of rain on Saturday. And it's got an icon with drops coming out of it and lightning bolts, and it just looks terrible. You know, and you're like, I can't play golf, I can't play tennis, I can't walk the dog, I can't go to the grocery store, I can't do anything. It's just going to be stay inside and play solitaire all day long, okay? So, how many of you know that that means that there's an 80% chance of one one hundredth of an inch of rain in a 12 hour period. Okay? One one hundredth of an inch of rain is barely enough to change the color of your sidewalk. That's it. Okay? That can occur in. The, oh my God. All right. Forecasting years ago when they would say 80% chance of rain meant that we would. Uh, get rain, rain, not one, one hundredths, hundredths of an inch. I, are they, are, are these people thinking that you have no memory of yesterday? That your memory is gone and they are inputting new information into your brain? Like you don't have information in there already? that contradicts everything that they're saying. I think that's how most people are today. They don't, they don't, it doesn't matter even if they have a memory. They, they're just, oh my God, we are in such trouble. We're in we two minutes in or even less. Trouble. So if you have a 12 hour <clears throat> period and it rains for two minutes, you get your one one hundredth of an inch of rain, you've got 11 hours and 58 minutes left where it's not doing anything and you can get outside and do whatever you want with no interference in the sky at all. The percentage has nothing to do with the duration of rain, uh, necessarily the coverage of rain, none of that, okay? But yet, it can be a very misleading uh, picture when you see those icons with all those drops and you see the high probability. And this was used as an excuse, myself included, for the longest time that, oh, well, the public doesn't understand probabilities, and so, you know, we shouldn't use them. Well, you know what? I think we're all a lot smarter than we give ourselves credit for. I think all of you are really, really smart folks, and I think if we talk about this in a reasonable way, that you will begin to see the benefits, as I have, of this approach. Now, 
you already use this type of thinking in your everyday life. For instance, when you get in the car in the morning to go to work, whether or not you realize it or not, you are assessing a risk. Is it worth the risk of being in an accident to get to work today? What's the chance of that happening? Is it it's clear that this guy does not think that you're smart. He, how, what motivates somebody to put up a video like this? What motivates them? I believe what has motivated this guy to put up this video is he knows that the weather is being controlled by man and the controls sometimes slip up and they don't know what they're doing or they have not achieved the success of the, uh, the weather event that they wanted to occur. And these meteorologists <clears throat> have to give themselves an out. That is the purpose of this video. Now, I am presuming, I don't know this guy, but he's a moron for putting up this video. And he doesn't think that you're smart because he wants you to buy all of the horse shit that, that's coming out of his mouth. Yeah, he's got to, he has to instruct us on probabilities and he has to tell us, we use that, you know, it's just kind of automatic in your brain. You assess probabilities all the time. You assess risks all the time. And that's what meteorologists do? Oh my God, please. Is it worth, is it worth the risk of being in an accident to get to work and put in my eight hours or six or 10 or whatever it is? Okay, so you're already doing that. Supposing somebody told you, uh, you, you had reservations at a restaurant and they came to you and said, well, based on the last couple of nights, there's a 10% chance that you'll get food poisoning. Would you keep the reservation? 10% doesn't sound like it's that high a probability, but you have to assess the risk as to whether or not you're willing to take that chance. Uh, supposing you have a one-year-old son or daughter and you want them to walk across the street for the first time by themselves and there's a, a Mack truck that you can hear in the distance down there. Is it worth the risk, even though it's really, really low, of letting him or her walk across the street by themselves and run the risk of that Mack truck speeding up and hitting him? Okay, so these are things that we're doing in our minds all the time already. We're assessing probabilities, assessing risks. And so there's no reason why we can't do this in, in weather forecasting as well. And it used to be that we only had the computing power to take a look at one model forecast. In other words, you know, there was a computer model that had all these incredible equations in it, and you ran it, and it gave you a solution, and that's what you went with. And you know what? You guys used to get it right a lot of the time. Now, you don't get it right. Hardly at all. <laughs> this is the new way. The new way is, well, a whole lot of ways that may manifest, or no way at all. That's the new way. Okay. Now, for the first time in human history, we have the computing power to be able to run multiple models based on slightly different starting points. Now, I want to give you an example of this over here. This is actually, a, uh, in a sense, a map of what uh, the isobars look like in the upper atmosphere, if you want to look at it that way. And in this particular group, this ensemble group has 21 members to it. And so notice how all the lines, I don't know how well you can see this, but all these lines, the orange lines and the uh, teal lines and the green lines, are all very close together. So what we're doing is changing the initial conditions of the model just slightly to 21 different extents. And then we see what happens as we head out through time. So I'm going to advance this here to maybe 96 hours out, which is four days, okay? So now we're up to 72, and now we're up to 96. Now, if I zoom in, notice how the lines are starting to spread apart a little bit. Those little changes at the beginning are starting to have an impact as we head out in time. And if I go really far down the road, like maybe a week, 
we'll take this up to uh, 168 hours and then zoom in. Notice how it's starting to look like what we call a spaghetti plot, where you've got these lines that are literally almost chaotic. They're all over the place. That's a way that we can measure the uncertainty in the forecast. In other words, if all of these lines a week out were still really close to each other, then that would say, well, the atmosphere is not that sensitive to those little changes in the beginning. And, and by the way, what do those little changes represent? We can't observe the atmosphere perfectly because we don't have enough instrumentation to do that. Okay? There's, there's a lot of details in the atmosphere globally, and we can't pick them all up. So by changing the initial conditions a little bit at the beginning, we're in a sense saying, well, what if the air is just a little bit in this direction or just a little bit in this direction? What sort of an impact does that have on the forecast? Well, sometimes it doesn't have much impact at all, but other times it has a huge impact. Okay, and the frequencies that are now saturating our atmosphere, the microwaves, the extremely low frequencies coming from Gwen Towers, they do use that to modify the weather, manipulate the weather, steer the weather, intensify weather fronts. This is the world that we are living in. Oh, little changes in the air. Well, we don't have uh, the instruments to uh, measure every little change in the air. So these little changes, they could have really big impacts. Well, we, if we don't have the instruments to measure those changes, we don't know if our forecasts will ever be right. So you can't count on us. That's essentially what he is saying. And, and would, you would you rather me, me simply, simply pick, one, pick one, roll the dice, roll the dice and, say, and say, I'm picking this, I'm picking this one. one. Out of 21, I rolled the dice, dice and, and this is what I came up with. And you put and all you your put eggs all in, your that eggs basket, in that basket, as opposed, as opposed to being to able to being tell, able you, to tell you, you know, you know the, atmosphere the atmosphere is in a really, really unstable state, state and, and there are two, there or, are two or three equally, equally plausible, plausible scenarios, scenarios that could play, that could out, play here, out here, and I want to make you familiar with each one of those three, so no matter what happens, you're adequately prepared for what occurred. I would think, I would think that you would want to know that, okay? okay? Instead of me Instead pretending of to be certain, be certain about, about something, something when in reality, in reality there's no certainty to be had because it's a because very, it's a very, very complex, complex situation. situation. Now, now, you can not you only can look, not at, look, it look at, at it this way, way but you can look at it in terms of just a given location. So here, we're taking a look at what we call a plume, based on an ensemble forecast, of rainfall. And as and I move as my, I move mouse, my mouse, it's pointing, it's pointing out how much out rainfall is being predicted over the next several days by each one of the ensemble, of the ensemble members. members. So the so biggest, the biggest one, up one up here is at 3.53 inches, inches, and the smallest, and the smallest one, one is at 0.25. Point two five. Five. That's a big that's range. A big range. I, mean, that's I mean, that's a difference. And that's a big out for all of our mainstream media meteorologists. We don't know. We don't know what the weather terrorists have planned for you. So we're just going to tell you everything that could possibly happen. And maybe within that, within all of the possibilities, one of them might occur. The difference between a minor rainfall event and something that could really cause a lot of trouble and of course if it's in the frozen form, Something like 3.53 inches, inches could, could, you know, could mean a lot of snow or a lot of ice or whatever. So the more so spread the more there is in these lines, the more uncertainty the more there is, is and, and, and the more difficult, the more difficult it is to pin down, down a forecast for any one given, given uh, location. location. So, so what, we what we plan to do plan here, to instead of giving you what we call deterministic model forecasts, where you just take the European model or the American model and you say, here's what it's saying, and seven days out, it's getting out, it's getting a seven inches, inches of snow, snow which, is which is ridiculous, too. And that's what they used to do. And they were generally right. Now, they're not right. This guy, I, I think that this whole 11 and a half minute speech should result in firing him. Fire him. He doesn't know what the hell is going on, and he's just going to tell you, 
Well, it could be sunny, it could be cloudy, it could be rain, it could be snow, it could be a lot of rain, it could be a little bit of rain. Oh, oh my God. To think that to any, think model, that any is model is capable of making, making that, exact that exact of a forecast seven, seven days, days out, out especially, especially in the southern in part, the part of the United States. States. Doesn't it Doesn't make it much make more sense, sense to, say, to say, okay, okay out of these out of 51, 51 ensemble members, members which, which, which is how many the European Europeans have in their, have in their ensemble, ensemble forecast, forecast system, system. So, many so many of those, of members, those members are producing, are producing an, inch an inch or more, more. so many of so the many members are producing are three inches or more, or more. and then you and equate, then you equate that, that to a probability. For instance, if you have 50 members and 25 of them have an inch or more, you've got a 50% chance of an inch or more. It's not real complicated math. But there's an but awful there's lot of physics and, physics and thermodynamics, and thermodynamics that, go that go into these different these models. models. And, again, and again, for the first, for the first time in the history of mankind, history of mankind we, have we have the computing power to be able to, be able to quantify, quantify how, much how much uncertainty there is in the forecast, how sensitive is the atmosphere to these small errors in the analysis that start the model from you know the very beginning point. And, and, and this and allows this us allows to give you an idea, idea as to how as much, certainty much certainty or uncertainty there is, is what the various what scenarios, scenarios are that are most likely to occur, and, and how you can how then you use can that use information in your planning. Plan. We all hope we that all as we get closer to time, time, the certainty the grows, certainty and it normally does, does. But, but, you know, four, you know, four five, four, six, five, seven days out, there's a lot of uncertainty. And, you know, you can liken this to a hurricane forecast. You've seen the spaghetti plots with that, when all the lines are close together, there's high there's confidence in where that thing's where that going, but if they're all, if they're spread, all out, spread out, then we're not sure. We're not sure. And, and, and I think and it's, I think incumbent, it's incumbent, incumbent upon us in the broadcast, in the broadcast industry, industry to be able to look at you and say, you, say, you know what, you we, know, don't know. we don't know. Here are the most <laughs> plausible <laughs> scenarios. But Yeah, we don't know that that was the honest talk coming from this guy. We don't know anymore. We just don't know. This is progress. All of these computing models that we have. Wow, it's progress. And it got us to say, we don't know. You used to be able to forecast four days out. So don't tell us this crap that, how could we possibly do that? There are so many things that happen in the atmosphere. Well, guess what? With all of the harp stations all over the world, with all of the Gwen Towers all over, littered in this country alone, with all of the cell phone towers, all of these things, all of these emit frequencies that cause instability in our atmosphere. So this guy is telling you, shut up, stop complaining that we can't get it right anymore. I'm explaining why we can't get it right anymore. You've got to look at our forecasting a new way. We can't get it right. We don't know. So we're just up here every single day bullshitting our way through life, and we get paid a lot to do that. This is now our life. How do you like it? I don't like it. I don't like it. And I can't figure out how to get out of... Ah, there. You know what? This guy... <laughs> my God. Clearly he has no shame. Eleven and a half minutes. He just reduced himself to a twit. A twit on mainstream media.